Hello, my name is Adam Espenson, and I'm a cellist in the Boston Symphony Orchestra. In the second grade, my parents asked me if I wanted to play the cello. Um, so I started with a local strings teacher. She taught all the instruments, violin, viola, cello, I think maybe a couple basses. Um, and my dad started with me, so we learned together. Uh, my teacher even gave him a cello to use. Um, the only thing was that it came in a garbage bag and it was in pieces. So my dad had to find someone to glue it together. Um, and we found me a tiny cello. I was always uh, the smallest kid in class. So I had a pretty small cello. I think it was maybe an eighth size cello. Uh, and I sat on a little footstool and so I had my tiny cello, my dad had the garbage cello, and we were off and running. So now here in the BSO, uh, the cello section has 11 people in it. Um, that's a pretty good sized section. There's only maybe 100 people total. Um, so it's nice and big. Um, we generally join the bases. Um, and take care of the low frequencies in the string section. Um, but we do get a fair amount of good melodies. Uh, the principal cello gets a lot of solos, so it's a good place to be. Um, you get to feel good about laying the foundation and then you also get your chance to shine. So I recommend it, it's a nice place to be. So let's meet the instrument. Um, you'll see there's a couple parts. Here in my right hand, we have the bow. Uh, the bow is essentially just a stick uh, with horsehair attached to it at either end, here the tip. And then if you see down here, there's a block of wood uh, that's called the frog. Uh, people ask me why it's called the frog. And I looked it up one time and no one really knows, I don't think, but I. It doesn't have anything to do with frogs, which is too bad. Um, and that frog moves back and forth. You can use this button here to s screw and unscrew, and that loosens and tightens the hair. Um, and then on that, hang on. I have here a cake of rosin. Mine's in pretty bad shape. Uh, rosin is made out of resin uh, from a tree, pine tree. Um, if you see a pine tree and there's kind of an amber colored liquid sort of oozing out of it, it's sticky. Uh, they use it for a lot of things, but it, it works well for this. They make little cakes out of it. And basically you just rub the hair on the rosin and it deposits a uh, kind of a powdery, uh, sticky substance and makes it, makes it grippy. Um, and that allows the horsehair to grab the string. And it causes vibrations in the string. Um, I'll put the bow down. So once we have the strings vibrating, um, that transfers, the energy transfers through this piece of wood, which is the bridge. Um, and then from the bridge, it goes down into the body of the cello itself. The body is essentially just a resonance box. Um, and that amplifies the sound, which, you know, comes out of these two F holes here. Um, so that's that part. Um, we have the four strings. Uh, the left hand changes the notes. So essentially the string length is what's important. Um, if you want a higher note, you want a shorter string. So what you're doing with your left hand is just clamping the string down to effectively shorten the length and get a higher note. Um, 
And then the four strings are tuned to the same notes all the time. And you do that with pegs up here and also down here. This is called the tailpiece, and there are fine tuners where you can make micro adjustments. Um, that's most of it. Up here at the very top is the scroll. Uh, it's just a nice, beautiful carved uh, block of wood into a scroll. It's kind of a way for the maker to show his skill, uh, the maker of the instrument. And then down at the bottom, we have the end pin, which you can uh, adjust in or out in order to set the height of the cello so that it's comfortable. Um, daily maintenance for the cello is uh, pretty simple, actually. Um, for me, it's mostly about keeping it clean. Um, I like to use a rag, um, clean rag. Uh, you want to get the rosin off of these, uh, this part of the strings. That'll build up over time. You might need to hit it with uh, some steel wool or something like that to really get all the sticky rosin out of there. Um, my fingerboard gets a little gunky, so I do that. Um, if you're gonna get dust and rosin off the body of the cello, you definitely want a clean rag for that. Um, and then anything else maybe that goes wrong with your cello, you're gonna wanna take to your teacher um, or a shop. Um, maybe keep an eye out for a couple of things. One is the straightness of the bridge, this part here. If that starts bending one way or the other, take it to your teacher. Um, and if you're in a shop getting it looked at, one little tip I have is to ask them to sharpen your end pin. Um, you really can't have it sharp enough. Uh, you want it so that you can just set the cello down and it won't scoot away on you. That's an embarrassing thing. As far as changing strings and the hair on your bow, I do a rehair of the bow every six months or so. Uh, the strings will last a good year, um, but again, you can kind of ask your teacher. And now that we know all the different parts of the cello and how to maintain it and take care of it, you're ready to start playing. So I'd like to talk about uh, my own practicing and warm up. For me, warm up is uh, important. It's kind of the transition from your hectic modern everyday life to playing the cello and making music. So for me, the key to that is going slow. So I like to just play very slow scales to open my practice session. And really, just it's as basic as that, even now for me. Um, and the idea behind it is I'm trying to kind of wake up all my senses, my, my ears mostly. Um, over the course of a day, things uh, stiffen up a little bit. So I like to kind of get my ears working. Uh, is the sound coming out what I'm expecting? Um, are all my body parts moving the way I want them to move? Um, I often have cold hands, that's a big thing. So sometimes I like to do just little exercises, uh, stretches with my hands. One I've been doing lately is just to kind of squeeze into a fist and then really wide and you kind of do that over and over. And then maybe some wrists, stuff like that, just to get blood flowing. Um, but essentially just uh, going slow, taking your time to like kind of get into the groove of things is uh, how I like to approach things. And then once you're warmed up and going, um, I would say you don't have to do too much every day. It's when you're starting out, maybe five, 10, 15 minutes 
a day is plenty. Um, the most important thing being consistency, just do, try to get to the cello every day. Um, you'll progress faster if you don't have to relearn things um, because you missed a couple days. So the consistency, I think, is key. Okay, so let's say you have a rehearsal coming up. I think if you asked most of the people in the orchestra, they would tell you, uh, you need to learn your part. Um, that's the most important thing. You gotta come prepared. They would probably also tell you to bring a pencil uh, to rehearsal. There's always things to write in your music. There's a lot of information coming at you and it's good to be able to write it down so you won't forget. Um, you're gonna wanna bring your music uh, if you're responsible for having music at the rehearsal. Uh, I'll take it a step further and say bring your cello. Uh, <laughs> people have forgotten their instruments before. Um, make sure it's in good working order. Um, the end pin, I had a student once who showed up without an end pin, that makes it, makes it difficult. And once you're at the rehearsal, you're going to want to listen as best you can. Um, that's kind of why you prepare, so you're able to listen to what's going on around you um, and enjoy what's going on around you. Uh, you're there to play with other people, so you want to be able to fully engage and, and use all your senses to, to really enjoy yourself and have a good time. The other thing to think about uh, if you're a string player is that you're gonna have a stand partner so you want to uh, make sure that both of you can see the music, um, place yourself not too close to the stand so that you're hogging the stand and your person next to you can't see. Um, you want to make sure your markings, if you're writing in the part, are legible. Um, and I would also say don't, maybe, don't put too many fingerings into your part. If, you have a number over every note, um, maybe the person next to you doesn't want to use that fingering and it'll be distracting to them. So just things to think about. Um, also, information might get passed back from the principal cello, in which case you're gonna wanna make sure that you turn around and pass the information back so it doesn't stop at your stand. Um, but just good things to think about uh, stand partner etiquette. So for demonstration, I'd like to play a movement of Bach. Uh, this is from the second suite, uh, the Gig. Thank mm -hmm. you. 